All right, I got the cab over popped open now because I got to go through it and make sure it's ready for a big old cross country trip because we got to take it from North Carolina out to Utah and grab the rest of my stuff that I left out in Utah. So I definitely have to do an oil change on it as well as buttoning up any little things that might pop up. And I'm going to keep this oil because I want some decently good oil to go into a second cab over that I bought. However, this second cab over has been sitting for like 10 years. So it'll be nice to repurpose this oil just because oil for these trucks is so expensive. So put this oil into this new truck so that that other engine at least won't have some old sludgy oil to work with while we try to get it running. But that'll be another video, but it is going to be one of the vehicles that's going on the trailer. So we got a second cab over, I got a pickup truck, and with whatever remaining trailer space there is, I got a bunch of other little stuff we can pack on there. So it's definitely going to be a big, heavy, cumbersome, awkward, creative load that we got to haul all across country. So should be interesting. So let's change this oil. And then after that, this truck's getting 10 brand new Falcon tires on it, which I'm super excited about. And then we'll tidy up the trailer. And once the whole rig's ready for the road, we'll hit the road. First, I had to jack the front end up a couple inches so that the tote I'm going to use to store this used oil in could fit underneath the engine. Lastly, I poured 11 gallons of new oil into the engine, and I was able to buy these buckets of oil from a wholesale oil supplier, so that definitely makes these oil changes a little more affordable. My alternator belts are also loose, so I'm going to tighten those up while I'm under here. Once the alternator was pushed over a little further, I went on to top off power steering fluid as well as coolant, and at that point we're done with all the engine maintenance and can let the cab down, while making sure my shifter is lined back up with this hole since it likes to kick over sometimes. <laughs> Currently the cab over has some real ugly steel rims on the back axles. It has nice aluminum ones on the front, but I went ahead and grabbed some aluminum wheels for the rear too. They're just a little dirty. Using some cleaner, gonna try to freshen them up, get them shining a little bit, and it should really freshen up the look of the cab over. Cab over's getting lots of love this afternoon. Got the whole gang here doing some tire surgery. Falcon sent me out 10 brand new tires. We got eight drive tires, and some real nice knobby tread, as well as two steer tires. And Falcon's a worldwide brand. It's been around since the 80s, so they make some really good tires. So I'm really proud to get them on the cab over. So with all this manpower, should have them swapped over really quickly. Here's one of my front rims that I'm cleaning up the oil and grime off of with some simple drill brushes and soapy water to get into all the nooks and crannies of the rim. Yeah. Once we put a new Falcon steer tire on that rim, we mounted it back up on the front axle of my truck and cinched all the lug nuts down with a big impact and put the chrome lug nut covers back on to keep the threads clean. Then we did the same thing for the passenger side of the truck. I even put NICs and all these threads to protect against corrosion and so things could come apart easier in the future. And then torque these lug nuts down real tight with a heavy duty impact. Now that the back of the truck is onto the concrete, it's time to tackle the rear axles on the truck. I'm doing this all at the neighbor's garage since they have all the right tools to handle these big tires and Elijah was there to help me out. He's a guy in the white shirt and is real skilled with getting these tires swapped out and he did most of the work this afternoon. Once the new tire is on the rim, a blast of air from the bead blaster sets the tire on the bead. Then it's just a matter of repeating the whole process until all 10 tires are swapped out. Also, I did get some stuff to try and polish my aluminum rims, but after a bit of trying and me not knowing what I'm doing when it comes to polishing, I gave up on trying to make them shiny. this year I made this dovetail ramp setup for the back of my trailer which works really nice has some really heavy duty ramps the only complaint I have with it is that it leaves this gap with no tread plate so I'm gonna address that now I went ahead and cut this extra piece out I cut it away to where it left these ears and also some reliefs for these bolts coming through so this will end up going and bolts into these holes I have right here at a hinge point now that I have this new chunk bolted in like that, it can go ahead and hinge down 
and take up that space. So we have full stretch the whole way. But then you can also just fold out. Ramp folds up. And everything stows away like that. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Here's the corner I always get stuck on, which it's extra muddy today, so see if I make it. Come on. Yeah, I think opening up this road is gonna be one of the things I do when I get back. Tennessee! All right, I was trucking along. And then I just started hearing the squealiest squeaking ever. I thought I was slipping a belt on the semi or something, so I pulled over. I thought my alternator was locking up or something, but no. Obviously, you hear the screeching now. My truck's turned off right now. Turns out, it's cicadas in these trees. It's all along that tree line. I kept hearing squeaking, and it was just continuous cicadas. Look, I even, even caught one right here. Gonna focus in. I'm sure there's just millions of these dumb bugs. And that's what was making the squeaking. So my semi is actually fine. Kentucky! Illinois! Missouri! Iowa! Nebraska! Wyoming! Woo! We made it back to Utah. Man, I miss this place. It's so good to be back. All right, first order of business is I have some old trucks and old truck parts stored in a field in the middle of nowhere. It's where Jackknife Jim keeps some of his animals. So now that I'm not in Utah anymore, and now that I'm kind of shifting towards much bigger projects, it's time to clean up this old junk and get it out of Jim's property and move on with our lives. So I'm going to meet Jim there right now. He has some equipment there that he'll be able to help load all these dead truck frames and whatnot. So fill up my step deck and take it to the scrap yard. Ah, I got the trailer loaded with all this stuff. There's a lot of good old Ford <laughs> truck parts in there. Because for those of you that have been around for a while, you know this channel was built on old diesel Ford trucks. However, I'm wanting to progress the channel down a bigger and better route. Bigger trucks, semi trucks, military trucks, the old projects. So, kind of outgrown the old little pickup trucks. Because I have no good way of storing these things out in Utah, nor do I really need these parts anymore. I'm willing to part ways with it. Just haul stuff to the scrapyard. The only issue there is the scrapyard won't accept truck frames without titles or some sort of scrap paperwork. And the DMV wouldn't even issue me a scrap permit or anything because there's no cabs here. So I don't have any VIN numbers and they needed VIN numbers. So that means we gotta chop this stuff up, chop the frames into little sections and then they'll sneak it through and the scrapyard will take it. So that is annoying. We gotta do that extra work of breaking this stuff down, but Let's get these parts out of my life, ready to move on. So let's get busy chopping stuff up. Since the trailer hitch and bumper hang down lower and make things look more like the back section of a truck, I'm using the plasma cutter to remove the trailer hitch and the rear bumper so that this bed would sit lower on the trailer and do a better job of hiding the frame section underneath that it's attached to. Then I used the forklift to lift the bed off the jack stand and set things back down on the trailer. Next, I removed the bed that was sitting on the front half of this frame so that I could access that section and use the plasma cutter to cut that front half of the frame off so that only the frame section under the first bed could stay with that bed. After using the forklift to massage the frame up and down to loosen up the last bits of steel holding things together, as well as a little extra cutting, I was able to free up that chunk of frame and set it down on the ground for further processing. Now that it's on the ground, I can use the plasma cutter to chop it down into three little sections, and then those pieces would be small enough to stash away inside of these beds. After some encouragement from the sledgehammer and cutting through the various lines and wires, the pieces were freed up. Next, I forked that initial axle onto the trailer and maneuvered it around until it was tucked up against that bed. Then I repeated all the steps to the second truck frame, 
cutting out the rear axle to start with and getting it out of the way and set next to the other axle we removed. And then using the forklift and alternating between jack stands until that frame was massaged back onto the trailer deck. Then I just had to cut the frame and exhaust off in front of that bed so it wouldn't be associated with that front section of frame anymore. I also did another cut a couple feet further up that frame so things could be in even smaller sections. But instead of scrapping the front half of this truck, my neighbor ended up wanting to buy that engine and transmission and front axle. So I went ahead and sold that segment to him. loaded up all these beds are processed and broken down sometimes you got some frame hiding in there but hopefully the scrapyard accepts that I'm curious to see how much all this weighs all of these beds are filled with quite a lot of steel and also by the way you guys recognize that orange frame only a few of you will that's because it was from a video that I made a year ago that uh, YouTube ended up censoring because it was too spiffy so I just have it hidden away as a private video, but I'm gonna put that link at the bottom of this description. Go watch at your own discretion. Viewer discretion is advised. It's quite the video that I think I regret making. But as for this, let's get on the road. First truck going on the trailer is this clean old OBS Ford crew cab lawn bed. Has an IDI diesel engine. A year ago, I put a VGT turbo on it and compounded that into the stock turbo. And that was enough to blow up this engine. So this truck doesn't run anymore. I do have a fresh engine in the back with head studs. So that should hold up this time. So we'll swap that engine into this truck once we get to North Carolina. But for now, it's dead. We'll just have to drag it onto the trailer. But I have been without a pickup truck during my time in North Carolina. So it'll be sweet to have this truck out there. Next truck going on the trailer is this one back here. Here we have a second Ford cab over. As you know, I'm in love with these trucks. This one's also air ride on the cab. so. Perfect. This is gonna be the cab over I use for my heavy haul toter home project. This model is a slightly shorter cab than the other cab over I have, but I like that this cab is shorter for the heavy haul toter home project because that just means that there's more real estate of the frame rails to be used for the main living quarters rather than being eaten up by the back of a cab over cab, which is already kind of a cluttered, hard use of space. This cab over is super clean and it only has about half the miles as my other cab over. However, it has been sitting in a field for at least over a decade. I don't know how long it's been sitting, but it was already so much of a pain to rescue it out of that field and get it to this point. So this truck is soon gonna get a whole video dedicated to it of rescuing it from that field and then getting this engine running. Because apparently it ran when parked, but that was over a decade ago. So hopefully with some tune-ups and whatnot, this engine's still healthy and we'll be able to get it running. But for now, it's just dead weight that's gonna have to be dragged up onto the trailer as well. It's even heavier because I have a few sets of air ride axles in the back. An air ride is obviously way nicer than the spring ride that's already on it. So for the heavy all toter home, out of these two air ride sets, I'll be able to piece together a tri drive of air ride axles. And that's what we'll use for that project. However, all this steel packed together is probably at least 22,000 pounds right now. So I don't quite know how I'm getting it onto the trailer yet, but hopefully we figure out a creative solution. And once these two trucks are on the trailer, we'll see how much trailer space we have left and keep packing it full of bunch of little random stuff I have hanging around this property still. Alrighty, just chopped my steering in half because this U-joint was really blown out. Good news is the one out of the second cab over is in perfect shape, so I'm going to swap that one in. And I also thought about replacing the whole steering column all together, but the top U-joint on this truck is good, and on the second cab over, the top one's bad. But on the bottoms they're flipped so we'll just swap the bottoms out and then my main cab over will have really nice steering and then the second cab over will have really loose steering but it only has to steer itself on and off a trailer for now before it gets completely redone in the future
I'm at Sparks Motors right now because I asked Dave Sparks if I could borrow his Wrecker 5 ton right here. And he was like, of course, man. So thank you, Dave. This is gonna make it a lot easier getting all my dead trucks up onto my step deck trailer. So let's fire this thing up, head back to where my trucks are. Fired right up. This truck is really old faithful. Now we're using the Wrecker 5 ton to pull my dead trucks from this corner of the field over to where my trailer is set up. The second cab over was quite hard to steer, but thankfully we didn't have to pull it around corners that were too sharp. Now that those two trucks are in line with the trailer, we can get everything ready for winching them the rest of the way. All right, we're going to pull with the main 30,000 pound winch right here, but we have to get this winch line up higher, so we're using this boom down here to the snatch block, and that'll pull the cable up and then feed it at a nice level. As you can see here, I have my semi truck turned off to the side at an angle. So that allows us to have a straight shot of running the winch line from the Wrecker 5 ton to the rest of my trucks. I also positioned some temporary ramps for my pickup truck to ride up onto the front deck on. All right, this truck's getting into place. Now that we have the front tires on these frame rails a bit, before we run it off here, we have to figure out how to fixate this back. So I think a couple chains, pull this back down and then we can pull this truck off the front of this trailer. We added these two by sixes because the tires were pinching too bad. So once they got up on the two by six, it wasn't pinching on those frame rails as bad. All right, I got the chain hook there. It goes over the frame rail around this round bit and then back over to a binder in the middle and then the same thing on the other side. So that made this chain really tight and it should do a really good job of holding the back of those frame rails down. So at least now let's try to pull this truck forward on these frame rails and see how they start behaving. Now well, these frame rails are doing some sort of weird twist and bend. I was wondering if they're gonna be strong enough. I have to figure something else out. All right, my tape measure and I have been brainstorming really hard, and I think I have a way that's going to get everything on this trailer pretty much. That'll include my OBS, stub truck even found a spot on the trailer, obviously the second cab over, my motorcycle, another dirt bike, and some 55 gallon drums and other random junk I have to get off this property and take with me. I think that's everything. Oh, and the burn barrel. But well, first order of business is we're still gonna have to get this OBS as far forward as we can. So what I've done for now is supported the ends of these frame rails. So we'll go ahead and pull this truck all the way forward. And then I'm going to jack it up a little bit and put a bunch of metal pieces welded in between the frame of the trailer and the frame of the truck. And that's gonna transfer most of the weight from the frame of the truck down to the frame of the trailer rather than the front axle of the truck onto these frame rails. So let's focus on doing that right now. I don't know if my Pipe stands on top of stacks of tires is going to hold up, but we'll find that out soon. <laughs> Alright, it's on there. Bet you have never seen a crew cab lawn bed truck on the front deck of a trailer. But there it is. Time for the next piece of the puzzle. Alright, this truck is a little bit off center to the back, so I'm going to get a little greedy and see if I can move it over a few inches. I've got the forklift picking up this side and pulling in that way. Now I'm going to jack at an angle to try to pick up this side and push the whole rear end that way. So we'll see if this goes smooth. If anything goes bad, I'll just crash down on my little hidey hole here. Right, it's working. It's working out better than expected. Uh, I'm going to call it good there. Quit while I'm ahead, you know. It's pretty centered now.
I don't think I've ever tried to weld something that I'm hauling directly to the trailer, so this is a first for me. But adding these steel supports will help take several thousand pounds of weight off my front axle so that the beams I extended off the front of the trailer can only deal with about a thousand pounds of remaining force. Welding in two of these steel supports would probably be strong enough to support this weight, but I went ahead and welded four in just to be safe. So here's that modification I made for this truck. Out of these metal supports, weld straight up to the frame, to the trailer. So now that takes a lot of the weight. And there's not too much weight on the front axle anymore, so those beams don't banana and bend like they used to. Now that the pickup truck is nice and situated on the front deck of the trailer, we can now focus on winching the second cab over on. Using the side-by-side -side to unspool the cable back to the cab over was much easier than doing it by hand. All right, now that the truck's climbing up, got this back axle chained as high as possible to hopefully push the front axle down more and give us more ground clearance. Chaining up that rear axle did do the trick for giving us enough ground clearance to get up onto the trailer. We probably only had half an inch left to spare. Once the truck was up on the main deck, I undid that chain and dropped that rear axle back onto the trailer deck. Cab over situated great. That's Jackknife Jim on the winch controls. Got it. Thank you, Jim. It's nice to have an experienced winch man running those to get that up there. Got her done. And it's all just little stuff from here on out. Last truck going on the trailer is good old stub truck. It needs some new parts to get running good again, so I opted to just drag it onto the trailer by jutting the wrecker boom off the side of the 5 ton, so stub truck could just be pulled parallel along the side of it. After a little bit of shimmying, I got stub truck where I wanted it. Oh my gosh! Oh! <laughs> Now during the five years I lived in Utah, I actually just lived in this school bus so I could save money on housing expenses. But now that I'm building the heavy haul toter home to live in, I no longer need the school bus. So while I was out in Utah for this trip, I traded the school bus for a pretty sweet modded out motorcycle, since that is actually something that is small enough to fit on the trailer. I was able to fit the motorcycle and my very first dirt bike in between the front of stub truck and the rear of the cab over. Also, I am down to sell this new motorcycle, so if you happen to be interested in it, then pause the video here to check out these details on it. All right, all my lines down here are a bunch of corded out of the way. This one's bent down. It's now for the moment of truth if the cab and the bumpers want to touch.
not too close? You got eight inches, maybe. All right, that's all I need. Yeah, that'll run. Well, we got quite the load here and it's all strapped down. So we're ready to hit the road. Let's see what comes of this trip. Will it be smooth? No, guarantee it won't. It was in fact such a not smooth trip that was full of breakdowns, issues, and setbacks that this trip across country at least ended up providing so much content that constitutes a need for a whole second video dedicated to it. So stay tuned for that video coming out soon and subscribe so you don't miss out on that disaster.